talking about the importance of breathing mechanics and how your breathing mechanics um, help to integrate your breathing diaphragm and your pelvic floor. And sometimes I refer to the pelvic floor as the breathing diaphragm, um, the uh, pelvic diaphragm. Both of these um, areas of your body work together. One can't go up without, the, and the other one go down on the same side. They either go up together on the same side, or they go down together on the same side. Up to this point, we've talked about two biomechanical positions that occur in your pelvis. One, where your pelvis is oriented over to the right. And when your pelvis is oriented over to the right, remember, this is desirable and a good thing when you're putting weight on your right leg. But when your pelvis is still staying oriented over to the right when you're putting weight on your left leg, it is an undesirable thing from a biomechanical standpoint. Because if your bones aren't in the right position, muscles are not going to be in the correct position to support you. So it is our desire in our clinic to get your pelvis to back oriented over to the left. As you can see, it helps your spine to orient correctly. It helps your pelvis to orient correctly, which directly affects your hip and your knee and your ankle. And it also goes all the way up and affects the middle part of your body and your head and neck as well. At this current biomechanical position, if your pelvis is oriented over to the right and you're putting weight on your left leg, your, your pelvic floor on the left side I've taught you is going down and the right side is going up. Well, in that biomechanical position, that is desirable when our left leg is swinging through the air. And if our left pelvic floor is going down, guess what? So is our breathing diaphragm is also going down. So from the side, you guys, if I'm going to take a step and my pelvis is oriented over to the right, and I go to take a step and my pelvis is oriented over to the right, I have to take the middle part of my body and have to spring it around. So now... My ribs are flaring out and my pelvis is coming forward. Well, guess what? Your outer ab muscles, your internal oblique, and your transverse abdominis muscles on this left side now are not in the optimal position for your breathing diaphragm to be in the right position. Your internal obliques connect from your rib cage down to your pelvis, and you have your internal obliques that go down here and act like a corset. And if you look at scientific research, we have found that your internal obliques and your transverse abdominus muscle are closely coupled and work with your pelvic floor. So if they go, if this, if your, if your ribs aren't in the right position, your breathing diaphragm is also going to be down. So if, if my pelvis is oriented over to the right, both my breathing diaphragm and my pelvic floor are going down. This is desirable when my left leg is swinging through the air, but not desirable when I'm putting weight on my left leg. We want both of these diaphragms to go up so I can help regulate internal pressure. I can help support my internal organs. And I can help get this compression so I can get power push from the floor to swing my left arm and my right leg forward when I go to walk or when I go to run. So in our clinic, you will see us blow up balloons. You'll see us maybe use straws or kazoos because what we're trying to do is with that forced exhalation is to get your left ribs to come down to work with your pelvis to orient over to the left. So if we get the, the, to orient over to the left and we get your ribs to come down in a state of exhalation, guess what? Both your breathing diaphragm and your pelvic floor start to learn how to ascend. And then here's the fun part. If you can hang on to this position, both of your pelvic floor and your pelvic diaphragm learn to go down, but in a new biomechanical position. Not with your left pelvis and your left ribs going forward where your, pel your trampoline or your pelvic floors are going to the ground. They're going to learn how to be in a new position where this can now act like a pump. This can stay in the right position. My pelvic floor can go up and go down and go up and go down and not plummet to the floor. If my pelvis comes forward, my ribs come up, both pelvic diaphragms and your pelvic floor are going to plummet to the ground and you're not going to get correct support on your bladder or get correct support with your intestines or to be able to regulate internal pressure when you cough or sneeze. I hope I'm making sense. So on the right side, you guys, in this biomechanical position, when your pelvis is oriented over to the right, this is my lame attempt 
of showing you your thor thoracic diaphragm or your breathing diaphragm and your pelvic floor. This is the right side of your body. They are both going up. Your left side is going down. That is desirable when my left leg is swinging through the air and my right leg is putting weight on my left leg. But what's happening if your pelvis is oriented over to the left, you still have the same thing occurring when you're landing on your left leg. Both of these sides are going down. So our desire in our clinic is to get your pelvis to orient over to the left and get both your breathing and your, and your pelvic diaphragm to learn how to go up. This should be going up. Wrong arrow. We're not going to redo this video. So this should both be going up when you're on your left leg, not going down like it is over here. So this is my, this isn't this dramatic, you guys. I'm just doing this to teach. But on the left side, we got to teach both your pelvic floor and your breathing diaphragm to go up. And the right side's got to learn how to come down. This is desirable when your right leg is swinging through the air. And this is desirable when your left leg is on the ground. And the only way it can achieve that is if you put the rib cage and your pelvis in the correct biomechanical position to retrain these two things to be able to pump air and to regulate internal pressure and to support your bladder and your internal organs correctly. And the other biomechanical position I taught you, remember not only is your pelvis oriented to the right, but now the right side is coming forward, so both sides are coming forward and both pelvic diaphragms are positionally descended. So we're gonna help first to help pull this back. And I showed you a, a, a technique up against the wall just to get this in a neutral position. But once it gets in a neutral position, meaning it's not going too far forward, we don't want it to go too far back. I'm telling you the story of the three bears. We want this pelvis to be upright. But then once someone learns how to get upright, we've gotta retrain it how to go back over to the left and then once it learns how to go over to the left, we've got your pelvis to go left, right, left, right. If the muscles work correctly, the minute you put your left leg on the ground. Because if I can slant on my left leg and my left pelvis can go back, I know my abs are going to support me. My inner thigh is going to support me. My glutes are going to support me and my hamstring. So the outer edges of my trampoline, the structure around my trampoline is going to be in the right position. So both my breathing and my pelvic floor can pump and do what it was designed to do. If it can't pump, you can't breathe. And guess what? Sometimes you're going to get this mid-lower back tension because now your diaphragm isn't working to help you to breathe. Now your diaphragm is going to be working to help stabilize you. So then we get upper traps. And, oh my gosh, honey, please rub my shoulders. Your upper traps are working too hard. Your neck is working too hard to help you to breathe. And they become more primary movers to help you to breathe versus your diaphragm muscle. So this is a complex material that I hope I can help simplify it a little bit. But I want you to understand when you come into our clinic and you blow up a balloon and you, you blow up a straw or blow up a kazoo, we're trying to retrain muscles to learn how to work together correctly. It's all about getting integration between your neck your trunk, and your pelvis, because they've got to work together simultaneously to go through a running or walking cycle. Have a great day. I hope it helped.